Good evening to those of you in Australia and good morning to those of you joining us from Europe. I'm Larky Condolis, Deputy Director of RMIT Centre for Cybersecurity Research and Innovation and have the pleasure of being your moderator for this event and would like to welcome you to today's launch of the Australian Lithuanian Hybrid Threat Centre. The Australian Lithuanian Hybrid Threat Centre is an initiative of the Australian Lithuanian Cyber Research Network and is being delivered by RMIT University in Australia and Nicholas Romerus University in Lithuania. We have a number of esteemed guests joining us today from across the world, and I'd like to quickly acknowledge His Excellency Mr. Darius Degutas, Lithuanian Ambassador to Australia, Mr. Andrew Cumston, who is the Victorian State Director at the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Professor Inga Zaujinaye, who is Nicholas Romerus University Rector, and Professor Peter Collo, who is RMIT University's Deputy Vice Chancellor for Global Enterprise and Vice President. Before we get started, I just wanted to touch on a few housekeeping items. Um, questions and comments can be posted in the chat and closed captions and translations can be accessed by clicking the three dots in the more tab at the top of your Teams um, app. And again, just encourage you for any questions or comments we posted in the chat. So I'd now like to welcome our first speaker, Professor Peter Collo, who has previously acknowledged is RMIT University's Deputy Vice Chancellor for Global Enterprise and Vice President to give an acknowledgement of country. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Lucky. Uh, and good evening to everybody from Australia and welcome to everyone who's also joining us globally online. What a special occasion this is, linking Australia and Lithuania around cyber security. I'm Professor Peter Collo, Deputy Vice Chancellor Global and Vice President here at RMIT. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this event, the launch of the Australian Lithuanian Hybrid Threat Centre. It's an exciting initiative between RMIT University in Australia and Nicholas Ramirez University in Lithuania. And it's an extension of the Australian Lithuanian Cyber Research Network. Before we begin, begin I'd like to give an acknowledgement of country. This is an important acknowledgement that we make at RMIT University and in Australia to show our respect for the original owners of this land, our indigenous community, and acknowledge the heritage of our country. RMIT University acknowledges the people of the Woiwurrung and the Boomerang language groups of the Eastern Kulin Nations on whose unceded lands we conduct the business of the university. RMIT respectfully acknowledges their ancestors and elders, past and present. And RMIT also acknowledges the traditional custodians and their ancestors of the lands and waters across Australia where we conduct our business. I'd like to congratulate the RMIT Centre for Cybersecurity Research and Innovation, who has been building this global recognition and with its own hub in Vietnam. And I'm so pleased to see the centre extend its reach into Europe through the Australian Lithuanian Cyber Network. I look forward to seeing the impact and success of the hybrid threat centre into the future. I'll now hand back to our host, Lackey, to introduce our next guest. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Collo. Joining us now from Lithuania, I'd like to welcome Professor Inga Zaujinaye, who is Nicholas Romerus University Rector, to provide a, a welcome message. Good morning and good evening for everyone. Dear Deputy Vice Chancellor Peter Collo, Your Excellency Ambassador Darius de Gutis, Honourable Professors, Experts and all participants of this important event. 
It is my honor and pleasure on behalf of my represented Nicholas Romers University academic community to welcome all of you at the Australian Lithuanian Hybrid Threat Center launching event. Not long ago, on February 8th this year, Nicholas Romers University and RMIT University gathered and established Australian Lithuanian Cyber Network, which began a cooperative activities between like minded experts. A few weeks after, on February 24, Russia waged a war against Ukraine, the so called special operation. Uh, the cyber attacks with the long lasting hybrid attacks that merges a dictionary attack and a brute force attack uh, was a prelude of aggression against neighbor country, sabotaging lives and security of thousands of innocent people. We are all familiar, but de facto it is a war not only against Ukraine but an orchestrated threat to the entire Western democracy. It was hard to believe that in the center of Europe, we became the witnesses of terrible crimes committed by Russia, the country with self-appointed yet absolutely unfounded role as a stronghold of peace and friendship among the nations. Also, we are becoming the witnesses of the growing ambition of the Red Dragon and the changing security environment in the Indo-Pacific region. We are the witnesses how authoritarian rulers all over the world are exploiting possible and impossible tools to keep and expand their power despite the painful costs. The events of 2022 reminded us once more that our neighborhood is still far from being stable and we always must be prepared for the unthinkable. I strongly believe that science and evidence are some of the most important tools that assist in guiding us through the troubling waters and maintaining our values, prosperity, and the way of life in democratic societies. Of course, this will require a collective effort. Therefore, I am very proud that our scholars and researchers have made a very timely decision to step forward in joining their efforts for research on hybrid threats impacts upon Australia and Lithuania. Sharing our knowledge, capacities and best practice land in countering hybrid threats, we can contribute to a well-informed and, of course, more resilient societies. Launching our joint center is only the beginning. We have a long way in front of us to identify and respond to the ever-evolving hybrid I'm confident that on this road, our universities will contribute to creating a future-proof, secure environment. Using the possibility, let me thank all the founders and experts of the center for their incredible efforts, expertise, and dedication. I wish you all great success. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor, for those words. I'd now like to invite His Excellency, Mr. Darius Degutis, Lithuanian Ambassador to Australia, who is joining us from Canberra, to say a few words. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, uh, well, it's an excellent initiative. It's an excellent event. We are, you know, we're separated by nine hours time difference. Uh, uh, between Lithuania and, uh, and Australia, but but we know that we are one ally team. 
I think it's very, very important because of what had happened, or what uh, rector of the Vilnius uh, Mikolas Remeris University had mentioned. The war is happening. Uh, it's not the Ukrainian people who defend their freedom. It's not the Ukrainian people who defend their independence. We know what had happened already 10 months ago, more or less 10 months ago. On February 24th, the history of the world had changed. But Ukrainian people, Ukrainian people, they defend not their own freedom, not their own independence, but they defend our freedom. They defend our independence and they defend your Australian people's independence and uh, Australian people's freedom. I think it's very, very important. And uh, I should also congratulate you, the founders of this uh, excellent initiative, of this excellent center. Of course, uh, we are absolutely delighted that uh, together with the two universities, RMIT and uh, Vilnius uh, Ramirez University, the Cybersecurity Center had been already established. I, I was absolutely delighted that the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Gabrielos Landsbergis, who paid the first, he was the first minister after COVID, who paid a visit to Australia in February, just 10 days before the war, the Russia's uh, unprovoked, uh, illegitimate war to Ukraine. He paid a visit to Australia. He was the first day he was in Melbourne and he came to RMIT. And uh, very many thanks to Matthew Warren. He is a fantastic friend uh, of the Lithuanian business community, of the Lithuanian political community here in Australia. So I do, I do really thank Matthew Warren. And he invited us, he invited the minister. And the minister launched the, uh, the new cyber security center from Melbourne. He launched, he, he was, communicating virtually with the uh, with the Vilnius University with the uh, the de deputy defense minister so actually that was one of the one of the larger stones in the Australian Lithuania and the cooperation now we have the hybrid threat uh, center i do think it is very important i should also mention that uh, uh, you know this is the first embassy the embassy was established only a year just less than a year when when Minister Landsberg is officially opened the embassy in February. I think it also uh, is very important because we have such an excellent uh, political cooperation with Australia. I should also mention that uh, Austrade, Austrade Trade and Investment Agency, Australian Trade and Investment Agency had been opened in Vilnius just two weeks ago. I think it's also very important because we already have in a way, not the embassy, but we have an official representation of Australia. This is only the 10th office in Europe. Can you imagine the 10th office? The first office was London, Berlin, Paris, Rome, Madrid. And you know, this is this is a, a new office in a small state, small state of Lithuania. Lithuanian office, Austrian office will cover also Latvia and Estonia. That's also very important. I should also mention that uh, the delegation from the Minister of Finance was in Melbourne two weeks ago. I was there and we were part of the, the first element, the first stage of the negotiations in uh, with the Australian Treasury Department to the, the negotiations were to avoid the double taxation between two states. I think uh, we will sign that agreement next year. I should also mention that uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we established the Baltic Friendship Group in Australian Parliament, and there are two senators, Senator Deborah O'Neill and Senator James Patterson, and they're very important senators. Uh, Senator James Patterson, he was chairman of the uh, Security and Intelligence Committee uh, uh, before elections, before May this year on the Australian Parliament. And he is now, he is now the shadow minister of the cybersecurity. So he is very good friend of Lithuania. He's the chair of the Baltic Friendship Group in Australian Parliament. Uh, we never had this uh, Baltic Friendship Group and now we have it. That's very important. Now there are around 20 senators who uh, who who, uh, who are uh, part of this Baltic friendship group. So I think it's also very important for you and for us to to, to bear this in mind. I should also mention that uh, we will have, of course, we all know NATO summit next year in Vilnius in July 2023. And of course, uh, uh, there will be letters inviting from NATO, inviting officially inviting the four Asian partners. Australia will be there. We do hope that the Prime Minister, Australian Prime Minister, will travel to to Lithuania and he will meet with our president. So I think it's also very very important. I should also mention that um, uh, that we, as the small state, the small 
small state, 2.8 million. You know, Australia is a larger state, so uh, we, we try to persuade Australia that that Lithuania is a small state, that capital of Ukraine, Kiev, is fly, of the flying time is less than from Melbourne to Canberra. Can you imagine? Ukrainian capital from Kiev, you fly to live to Vilnius is less than flying time from Melbourne uh, to Canberra. So it's it's also quite important that, um, uh, you know, the small state we opened this year for embassies in the Pacific region. First was in Australia. Second was in Seoul in South Korea. The third one in uh, Singapore that was opened this July. And uh, just a couple of months ago, we have uh, opened the uh, economic mission in Taipei, in uh, in Taiwan. That's uh, that's also important event. So uh, I should also, if you would allow, I would quote, I would quote uh, the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. I read this article about Ukraine. I think this article tells 200% truth. Just allow me to, to, to quote it. I don't care how often I have to say the war in Ukraine can end only with Vladimir Putin's defeat. Russian forces must be pushed back to the de facto boundary of February 24. There is no way Vladimir Zelensky or the Ukrainian people could conceivably accept another outcome not after the savagery they have endured. There is no land for peace deal to be done. I know the wearing counter argument that stepping up supplies to Ukraine risks escalation. We dare not risk poking the Russian bear. Surely to goodness, after almost a year of this hideous conflict, we can see what total nonsense this is. Mr. Putin knows he can use he cannot use nuclear weapons or other weapons of mass destruction. He knows the consequences. The truth is he is the one who fears escalation. It wasn't a threat from the North Atlantic Treaty Organization that provoked him to invade. It was decades of Western lassitude and irresolution about Ukraine's status that enticed the bullet to make his mistake. The West has atoned to this failure with a stunning display of coherence and unity since February. We must be stronger and bolder. This thing is only going one way. For the sake of the world, let's help those Ukrainians finish the job the quicker and the better. So thank you very much. I wish I wish this center to be launched on a ex excellent level. I also wish Australian part, and I hope that uh, uh, Professor Matthew Warren and all the other team will tell the Australian politicians what we've been telling. Please, Australian military, Australian cybersecurity experts, you need to join the Nash Lithuanian National Cybersecurity Center, which is already here in this in this uh, conference uh, presented by its director, Colonel Romaldas Petkevichus. I think it is important because Australia joined cybersecurity network in Tallinn. Australia joined Stratcom Center in Estonia, in Riga, in Latvia, and we need to have Australia here in Lithuania. Thank you very much. All the very best. Thank you, Ambassador, for those words and your ongoing support. I'd now like to welcome our next guest who um, is joining us from the United States, and we appreciate you being up in so late in the evening there. But uh, Colonel Romaldas. Pet Kavarovich, who is the Director of Regional Cyber Defence Centre in Lithuania to provide a presentation on the cyber landscape in Lithuania. Over to you, Romus. Thank you, Lagi. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for inviting me. Sorry for my civilian attire, but I'm in the United States traveling, so it's kind of, kind of early in the morning now, but uh, really pleasure to be to be with you. and. Uh, and I feel like a member of the, of, of the fa family, you know, because currently I'm studying at Miklos Ramirez University. So uh, I'm playing both both sides here, both Lithuanian and Miklos Ramirez University. Really, really, really pleasure, a pleasure to speak to you. And I decided uh, 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 to talk, uh, you know, to, today talking about cybersecurity, you cannot separate even hybrid cyber threats. You cannot separate. Uh, uh, 
don't look at, at what is happening in, in, in Ukraine. And that's why I decided to, to I, I'll be talking about Lithuania, but since I'm representing the center, which uh, among uh, uh, its members has uh, both Ukraine, Georgia, United States, Lithuania and Poland, you know, so I'll be touching a little bit on, on, on Ukraine, but uh, not, not too much. I still want to talk about hybrid, uh, hybrid rest, but if we can uh, move to the next slide, I, I, sorry, I'll be, I'll be using slides just for, uh, to, to guide, uh, to guide our, our conversation here. I know that I have 20 minutes. I hope next slide will appear, but just, uh, if, if we all remember those, uh, 2014, when the when the uh, annexation of Crimea happened, and uh, and the, if, if you remember at that time those uh, green uh, green man invasion in in the territory, and then uh, organizations such as NATO and European Union finally kind of realized that the, uh, this kind of notion of the of the hybrid warfare uh, is is uh, really. Uh, appearing there and, and maturing and and if 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 you remember at that time uh, and nato headquarters emerging security challenges division was uh, was established in 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 the baltic states if you remember the cooperative cyber security center in estonia was already present and lithuania uh, addressing energy security threats were, were, which were always important uh, in in lithuania established nato energy security center of uh, of excellence which i uh, was happy to establish and be the first director as well in in riga latvia uh, strategic communication center of excellence was established and all those three lines uh, kind of cyber energy security and uh, and strategic communications uh, in in understanding of nato uh, consisted this package of the of the of the hybrid threats and on top of that european hybrid security center in finland was was established not long ago with the leadership of ambassador by Unas, who is now Ambassador, uh, Ambassador, Ukraine's Ambassador in the United Kingdom. Uh, this initiative wa was large, so there, there, there was a, a lot of, of talk and action in, in about hybrids in both in, 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 in NATO and European Union. The, the slide that I'm the, the, the pictogram that I'm showing is actually from, from the NATO document. So what, what is important here is that it's it's not enough for uh, for state to be ready to address the, the the hybrid threats of course society should be ready because most of the threats that I I'll be talking about today in Lithuania were actually directed to affect society affect public opinion affect well-being of, of the society and create some kind of mistrust in the in the government mistrust in or or some kind of scary feeling in, among Lithuanian Lithuania society with those hybrid threats that I'll show but then those concepts with, that we are talking now uh, about uh, like preparedness and resilience which is which is very important not only in in business but in the in the in this uh, national security you know how nations approach uh, resilience resiliency uh, NATO developed uh, seven com resiliency commitments, which is, includes cyber, ne uh, cyber network security, includes energy security, uh, governance, and things like that. So, so those kind of concepts started uh, started to de to, to develop, and uh, basically, we are not uh, here, at least in our in our region, being uh, members both of NATO and European Union. We are not left alone in 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 Lithuania, at least. To address uh, to address those hybrid uh, hybrid uh, cyber threats that uh, that uh, we are facing, if we can go to the next slide, I'll show you a little bit of the statistics uh, how Lithuanian landscape uh, cyber landscape looks. Those those are latest data from uh, from a report published by National Cyber Security uh, Security Center. You see, uh, there are not not that many cyber events, but uh, as the uh, uh, His Excellency Ambassador told, we are not the the biggest uh, biggest state in, in 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 the world, so the the number of attacks is not that great, and uh, 
and uh, the dynamics, the growth of the cyber attacks is also not uh, not that much. But if you look what sectors are being uh, uh, attacked, uh, that uh, you can you can see that uh, hosting uh, inter uh, hosting service providers, uh, internet service. Pro, uh, providers and, and things things like that are uh, and organizations like that or or uh, actors into critical in the critical sectors like that are being uh, are are being mostly mostly affected uh, uh, mo mostly attacked because they operate the critical services that are uh, that are important uh, for the both national security and well-being of the society and and in many cases in Lithuania, those sectors are not operated by the by, by the public uh, companies. Those are operated uh, mostly by the private companies. So we understand here in Lithuania that uh, that cyber security or attention to the cyber security to the cyber maturity of, of our companies it's 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 very uh, very important here we are happy that uh, there is a lot of regulation in cyber from European Union and Lithuania in Lithuania we diligently implement all the recommendations and uh, uh, and I know that uh, Mr. Matt Warren is not fan of, of one of the uh, cyber maturity ratings. I'll not name the name, but by that rating, Lithuania is pretty high in the world. We are sixth in the world by ITU rating and, and probably second and third in the, in, in the Europe. So in, in looking at the cyber maturity in Lithuania, we're, we're pretty up there. Does it mean that we are totally cyber secure? No. No, we still have our homework to do. Our company ha still has homework to do to be more resilient, uh, more ready for the cyber attacks because because are there and the and the types of the cyber attacks, as you can see, uh, basically. Uh, uh, probably know that you're experiencing the same malicious software phishing attacks are are uh, are very very uh, the number is, is is pretty high with this intent uh, this year we organized the national cyber security exercise uh, cyber shield and uh, we executed a separate phishing campaign during the exercise we sent 56,000 uh, kind of uh, phishing uh, links and actually 13% of those links were clicked and data were submitted. So uh, society, the, 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 the citizens are still not uh, totally understanding the, the importance of cyber security. So that's the, the, that's the landscape, cyber landscape in Lithuania. If we can move to the, to the next slide, I, I, I thought I'll show you kind of uh, maybe timeline of the events when where Lithuania felt that they experienced those uh, uh, cyber uh, uh, hybrid cyber attacks, and and mostly in Lithuania, what what we noticed that those uh, those uh, cyber hybrid type attacks are um, are directed toward misinformation, toward uh, towards misleading the certain groups of the Lithuanian society. Towards affecting uh, affecting maybe financial sector, towards affecting public uh, the the sectors that provide some some type of the of the public uh, public service. Basically, basically uh, directed to 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 disrupt the normal operations of the uh, of, of of the society. And if you see in in 2015, you all remember then the. Events in Ukraine, big cyber attack in Ukraine. The 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 a lot of uh, customers in Ukraine lost uh, lost power. We we felt also uh, also certain uh, certain uh, in, uh, websites of our uh, of our public services were defaced with the kind of uh, the news that. Uh, that Lithuania is somehow or NATO is somehow threatening the Leningrad region. That's the typical theme that our uh, big neighbors, Russians and Belarusians, are using here uh, here in Lithuania. That's the cons constant theme that that we feel already uh, already in 2015. And and you know that Russians from 2000 so 
2014, after the annexation of Crimea, they were basically basically using Crimea as a polygon for the for the for the cyber uh, cyber attacks, cyber exercises, if if you would say if you if you would say that in, uh, on the territory of Ukraine. If you can move to the, to the next slide, I just wanted to to show the landscape what we are against on the on the other side you know you probably know this, okay, of all those uh, russian organizations uh, that uh, that uh, deal with the with the cyber and the russian government uh, FSB, SVR, the uh, military uh, intelligence service all those you know uh, again at uh, the national cyber security uh, center and, and regional cyber security center we don't do attribution in lithuania uh, attribution is is being done by by intelligence intelligence services but but nevertheless you know those those attacks that that you see here you know and 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 uh, you can see in the diagram that certain uh, advanced persistent threat actors uh, uh, are clearly linked with the with the intelligence uh, services in Russia, and everybody knows that. So, when uh, when you see the the certain type of attacks, certain tactics, techniques, and procedures that the attacker attackers use, you can basically identify where they came from. And most uh, the the nastiest are those ATP uh, advanced persistent threat actors that are. At, that are linked with one of those uh, one of those uh, security services. They are nasty. They are prepared. They uh, they know how to plan the cyber the their cyber attacks. They are very well resourced. So these are the groups that we really pay attention here in Lithuania. And actually, uh, uh, speaking about that, we just in uh, regional cyber defense center just recently produced uh, the study. Lessons learned from cyber war in the in Ukraine in the in the first kind of uh, half of the, this uh, this war, and we kind of highlighted which groups are associated with which service and what they have done during the beginning phase of the uh, of of the Ukrainian war. Because if you if you remember at the very beginning, just a week before war, there was massive cyber attack, DDoS attack in, in, in Ukraine, in the financial sector, some government utility ser services were affected just to demonstrate to society that uh, the government of Ukraine cannot be trusted, they cannot maintain the order, so they, with the hopes uh, that the invasion into Ukraine would go smoothly from Russia. So those kind of elements of the cyber hybrid war were already felt in, 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 in Ukraine at that time. So we can move to the to the next slide moving with the with the timeline certain uh, just to to show you reflection i don't know if the slide changed because it's the same uh, for me here on the screen but uh, in 2017 you all have uh, heard about uh, uh, WannaCry attack was uh, was the was the kind of ransomware. We felt it in Lithuania, not that much. And basically, what I wanted to say with the slide that the ransomware type of attacks in Lithuania are uh, are uh, not really that noticeable. You know, probably were not uh, that that interested and. Uh, in 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 this ransomware war, but nevertheless, you you all know the counter ransomware initiative that the United States launched uh, a couple of years ago. A regional Cyber Defense Center, uh, together with India, is in in, in the lead of uh, of uh, providing reporting to this initiative on the on the uh, ransomware events around the globe. And Australia, for that matter, is organizing counter ransomware task force. Which uh, Lithuania will be joining with the regional cyber uh, cyber defense center. So I, I understand that in Australia, with our talks with Matt, uh, that uh, ransomware events are much more uh, much more noticeable than than in Lithuania. If we can move to the to the next slide, 2018. Just wanted uh, to demonstrate that Ministry Minister of Defense at that time, Ambassador Karoglis, was also put in prison uh, and uh, kind of uh, 
some fake news published that uh, on 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 uh, charges with, with corruption you know so just to just just to affect the public facing uh, public facing uh, uh, politi political leadership public facing uh, websites that's that's what basically Russians do in our uh, in our cyber cyberspace. We can move to the next slide. I'm running uh, short on time, but just uh, just few attacks again, which uh, which were defacing both uh, both web pages of uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and and some other uh, uh, some other uh, ministry sites. Some some data were leaked. You know. With the intention to use for further maybe for uh, with compromising material. So so these are the uh, types of, of attacks that we are experiencing in in in, in Lithuania, and we classify those as kind of the hybrid uh, type uh, hybrid type uh, attacks. Um, if we can move to the to the next slide. More private business affected recently. You know, City B, one of the public uh, uh, or uh, transportation sharing uh, sites. That's more of the of the uh, security leaks in the in the uh, in the organization itself. You know, it just demonstrates how important it is to to be cyber resilient and cyber prepared, both both for the for the for the organizations in private and and, and public sector. Uh, uh, under the uh, European Union regulation, the, the list of, of subjects that are operating critical infrastructure are being kind of uh, assisted by National Cybersecurity Center in, 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 in preparing uh, to, to handle the e events in the, in the cyberspace. But, uh, but the companies, the leadership of the companies, most, most important part, we should understand and, and introduce the cybersecurity, cybersecurity culture uh, to, to, have, to have a continuity plans to be able to, to resume op operations after, after, after bigger, uh, bigger cyber, uh, cyber events. Can move to the uh, to the next slide. Just uh, just the recent, most recent, uh, most recent events in Lithuania. Financial sector was uh, uh, was affected, and some uh, some business sectors. Uh, so we are not left even in this time when the when the crisis and Russians are concentrated in Ukraine. Lithuania is not left with with, with without attention. We are, but we are much uh, much better prepared now. I, I really should should uh, compliment both National Cyber Security Center and then and the companies that understand uh, both in private and public sector that understand the importance of, of, of the cyber. We are much more resilient now. We are much 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 better prepared. Prepared. We're, we're much better. Uh, we really recognize. Uh, where the attacks come from, what what actors are playing uh, playing in our cyberspace, what to expect and how to react. But uh, if we can go to my last slide, that's that's one of the selfish uh, selfish reasons that I am uh, that I'm presenting at this event. I'm I'm really looking forward uh, on on expertise to understand. Uh, what cyber challenges or threats we might be facing from China in the future. And that's the expertise that we are lacking currently. It was not traditional for us to, to look at that part of the world, but now we understand that uh, those, uh, those cyber challenges and cyber threats are, 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 might be coming to, to our way. So I'm really looking to partner and, and I'm very pleased to see that academic, uh, academic community is already partnering, partnering establishing the cybersecurity network, hybrid threat center. That's, that's very important, but I'm really looking that Australia one day with the, brings the expertise to regional cyber uh, defense center and and joins our all efforts and maybe maybe we will uh, work on the on the practical practical guidebook how to understand and respond to the to the to the uh, Chinese threat. let's let's do that why not you know and and publish it on our website so thank you thank you very much for for inviting uh, sorry if I spoke a little bit more but uh, Really great event, really pleased to be with you. We'll be listening for future presentations. I appreciate it.
Thank you, Romus. And um, also, again, appreciate you being up so early in the morning over there in the US. I'd now like to invite our next guest who joins us from Melbourne in Australia, and I'd like to welcome Mr. Andrew Cumston, who is the Victorian State Director at the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Welcome, Andrew. Uh, good evening, everyone in Australia time or in your various time zones. Um, it's a pleasure to be speaking here today, and can I just start by thanking RMIT University. Um, for those who aren't familiar with RMIT, uh, their international engagement is absolutely superb, and it's a pillar of Australia's uh, soft power diplomatic um, efforts. So, so thank you, RMIT, uh, for inviting me here today, and, and thank you, Lackey. Um, also, great to see you uh, on screen. Ambassador de Gutis, um, always great to hear you talk and you've actually stolen many of my talking points because uh, I thought today considering um, uh, who I'm who I'm on a panel with that I would keep my remarks pretty much to the bilateral relationship, something that I know a bit about and and not try to talk about hybrid threats which um, which the uh, the previous and uh, succeeding speaker can speak to for much more depth. But um, thank you, Colonel, for your remarks. I I, I, I did, uh, especially your last suggestion, but I, I think um, I think the right way to approach all these uh, challenges is with a deep degree of humility, and Australia would never claim to be um, an expert on anything, but just uh, we're always happy to, to share what we do know. Um, so just a few things about uh, about the bilateral relationship. Um, it, it was actually a very special event uh, earlier this year where the um, where uh, Lithuania was able to um, open its its first uh, embassy in Canberra, and as the ambassador has noted, uh, it, it's uh, it's it's part of their increasing engagement uh, in the Indo Pacific, which we greatly value. Um, and we've also brought up uh, 30 years of diplomatic relations last year, so the relationship is getting uh, closer and it continues to grow through our shared commitment to democratic values, free trade and people to people links. We are a proud of our Lithuanian community in Australia, which numbers about 19,000 and their significant contribution to the building of this country. Uh, we note we note the scientific and business expertise of the Lithuanian Australians prominently on display during the visit to Australia in February this year by the Lithuanian Foreign Minister. Every speaker has brought it up and it'll be remiss of me not to talk about um, the Russian invasion, illegal invasion of Ukraine that has illustrated we can't take the rules based order for granted. And Lithuania has demonstrated its leadership to the European Union, NATO and global and its response to the visceral threat Russia's, act, Russia's actions represent. Australia commends Lithuania for its immense contribution towards Ukraine's self-defence. And we stand with Lithuania and Europe in defence of our shared values and interests. And of course, Australia's contribution, um, it, it can never be as much as, as Lithuania has made proportionally to the Ukraine. But I would just note that uh, RMIT's home city, which is Melbourne, um, is close to where the Bushmasters are made, which um, I'm not sure if uh, our Lithuanian friends are aware, but um, uh, Australia has will eventually donate um, 90, uh, 90 Bushmaster um, military uh, personnel carriers uh, to the Ukraine, and they've been uh, they've been featuring prominently in in some of the uh, in some of the recent uh, military activities, and we're very proud of this contribution, and we we appreciate also uh, the thanks uh, the Ukrainian government has given us. Um, so it is both an Australian product, but uh, proudly a Victorian product. But also in our region, Australia and Lithuania stand together and welcome the opportunity to work with others to promote an open, sovereign, prosperous, prosperous and resilient Indo-Pacific. And, in, and we appreciate Lithuania's understanding of the importance of our region and your support for our efforts to conclude a comprehensive and ambitious trade agreement with the European Union. It could create new trade and investment opportunities and help deliver our key objectives in the Indo-Pacific region and would also promote sustainable trade and support action to combat climate change, as well as also bring economic, uh, bilateral economic uh, opportunities between our two countries. And finally, I should note that uh, Austrade, um, our portfolio um, 
uh, our portfolio agency, the Australian Trade Promotion Agency, has just opened an uh, office in Vilnius last, Vilnius last week, and we consider that uh, extremely timely. And we are very proud of that. So with that, I would just like to say thank you for the again, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk and hand back to the, the following speakers because this is really a, a fascinating uh, presentation and thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for those words. I'd now like to call upon Professor Matt Warren, um, who is Director of the RMIT Centre for Cybersecurity Research and Innovation and the co-director of the Australian Lithuanian Cyber Research Network. Matt is currently in Lithuania and will speak about some of the learnings that Australia can take from Lithuania in relation to hybrid threats. Welcome, Matt. Thank you, uh, Likey. Uh, great uh, to be here. Uh, and it's great to be speaking here from uh, Lithuania. Uh, I had the chance uh, this week uh, to visit the new Austrade uh, office here in Vilnius and really it's sort of an indication of the growing uh, relationship uh, on all levels between Australia and Lithuania. So in terms of my presentation, what I'm gonna present uh, about is uh, hybrid threats and really what Australia can learn from uh, Lithuania and how Australia can start to deal uh, with hybrid threats and understand the issues that we face. So um, as was mentioned uh, by some of the previous speakers, the uh, Australian uh, Lithuanian Cyber Research Network uh, was launched in February this year. And uh, this hybrid, uh, the hybrid threat centre that's uh, being launched today is a initiative of that network and sits under the network uh, with the aim of developing hybrid threats uh, research jointly between the two countries and particularly in Australia because this is an area that isn't well understood you know the concept of of hybrid threats. So what do we mean by hybrid threats? Well, to quote uh, uh, the Lithuanian Strategic Review of 2017, where they formalised what hybrid threats were, so that the concept of hybrid threats refers to manipulation of mass media, cyber influence, uh, manipulation of elections, uh, employment of uh, military, economic, financial, energy related and social pressures you know, to put pressure on governments and decision making. And again, we've seen this around the world, whether it's from the Ukraine, whether it's elections in the Baltic, the US elections in, in, in Syria. So from 2017, you know, Lithuania sort of formally identified um, hybrid threats, you know, as being an issue. One of the challenges is uh, with all these different types of threats, the thing about understanding hybrid threats is there isn't just a single occurrence. There's actually a, a number of occurrences that occur from these threats against a country coordinated by a state or a sub-state actor. And for me, in an Australian context, th this is a major uh, you know, uh, difference in, in understanding the threat landscape in terms of what hybrid threats actually means from a very practical aspect. So just to sort of uh, draw upon some recent examples from uh, Lithuania, just to sort of high, uh, give sort of examples. So in terms of the information uh, threat, you know, 2020, we saw that the Russians, uh, you know, uh, organized the fake news campaign about Lithuania, uh, that uh, Lithuania was blockading the Russians uh, in the enclave of Kaliningrad, uh, formerly uh, East Prussia, and uh, stopping the movement of uh, rail traffic from Kaliningrad uh, through Lithuania uh, to Russia via Belarus. And again, you know, they uh, made many statements that, uh, you know, that uh, the Lithuanians were stopping the movement of traffic, they were destroying the rail infrastructure, and the reality was under the auspices of the European Union, uh, they, uh, the Lithuanian government was asked just to inspect 
you know, for certain products weren't being moved via rail. So again, it's, it's really an example of how fake news and information is sort of used, you know, uh, to put forward a false narrative. We also saw uh, national DDoS attacks being carried out uh, against uh, Lithuania. This is uh, a Russian linked group called Killnet uh, from their Telegram channel, you know, that uh, claimed, uh, you know, responsibility for organizing uh, these uh, national denial of service attacks uh, against Lithuania. Again, this very much was something that we've seen in the past. In 2007, uh, with Estonia, we saw, you know, Estonia, you know, victim of national uh, DDoS attacks that brought the Estonian economy, you know, uh, to a halt. But what we saw, next slide please, is that the Lithuanians had learnt from the Estonian experience and nationally, you know, had implemented DDoS protection uh, measures, you know, that would actually stop uh, these uh, attacks having the impact. Next slide, please. So what we saw was a situation that the same strategy that was used in 2007 against Estonia. Uh, in 2007, it was, you know, cyber militias that sort of supposedly had formed uh, to, uh, you know, uh, attack Estonia. What we saw was that that playbook from 2007 was, you know, used again in 2022, but did, it failed. And the reason it failed was that the resilience of the Lithuanian infrastructure, cyber infrastructure, the fact that they had learned from past uh, situations and the fact that, you know, they had uh, implemented an appropriate strategy to deal with that threat. Next slide, please. What we've also seen uh, in Lithuania is, is something that's quite unique is that the civil population of Lithuania actually have come together uh, to set up, you know, uh, initiatives driven by citizens. And this is the elves movement uh, who, who uh, operate the debunk uh, website. And, and what that is, is a whole range of different approaches and strategies, you know, to uh, debunk disinformation and fake news. And as I said, what's fascinating from this is, you know, this wasn't a government initiative. This was actually an initiative of Lithuanian citizens who felt that they could use their expertise and come together to help protect uh, Lithuania from that, that threat of, of disinformation. So what can Australia learn? Well, Australia can learn a, a lot from uh, Lithuania, even though, you know, as many speakers said, Lithuania is a small country, but there is a lot we can learn. Lithuania is a frontline cyber state. They're dealing with hybrid threats, you know, on an ongoing basis. In Australia, we don't deal with hybrid threats in the same way. Our hybrid threats come from a different uh, state actor and they're profiled in a different manner. One of the challenges Australia faces is that we still think of threats as being single issues, such as being cyber, such as being economic, and we don't understand the concept of, of hybrid threats in terms of, you know, actually there's a number of threats that are brought together, uh, you know, that uh, can bear harm upon uh, a country. And really, this is another key driver of the new hybrid threat centre, is to help raise awareness of hybrid threats within Australia. Next slide, please. This is uh, an, an image from uh, the European Union uh, hybrid threat model, which just sort of identifies, you know, when we talk about hybrid threats, you know, we talk about so many different elements. You know, cyber security is just one element. There's the fake news, there's the economic aspects, there's, you know, the defense, legal, society manipulation, uh, political mani ma manipulation. So what you're seeing is a situation that a whole number of those threats can be brought to bear upon a country. Uh, 
you know, at a single point of time. And really, from my perspective, you know, this is a major uh, change in the way that sort of countries have to deal with threats. Next slide, please. So as part of the launch of uh, of our new hybrid threat center, we've also uh, released a new discussion uh, paper. So as part of the hybrid threat center, you know, what uh, we want to do is raise discussion and, and understanding and the authors uh, Meredith Prynrose and Professor Aidan Warren. And again, uh, their discussion paper is about Nord Stream and, you know, the threats uh, that it can have upon energy uh, security in Australia. And if you uh, visit uh, the RMIT website, uh, there's uh, a link there, uh, you know, to where you can download uh, the uh, article with uh, with the with the tab. So uh, what we're going to be doing, you know, in terms of the threat center is is developing a, a lot more of these articles and sharing them, you know, within uh, our various websites uh, is a way. Well, one of sort of identifying what the key challenges and issues are facing Australia and Lithuania, but also to raise an awareness and having that sort of public uh, discussion, uh, you know, about how, uh, you know, these hybrid threats, you know, are developing and how, you know, countries such as Australia and Lithuania, you know, can deal with those threats. So thank you, Matt. Um, and now finally for today, I'd like to invite the executive of the Australian Lithuanian Hybrid Threat Centre, uh, Professor Darius Stitoulis, uh, the Dean of the Faculty of Public Governance and Business at Nicholas Romerus University, as well as the co-director of the Australian Lithuanian Cyber Research Network. Um, and he'll be joined by his colleague, Associate Professor Marius Laurinatis and Professor Matt Warren, um, who will provide some final thoughts and, and comments before we close out this event. So over to you, gentlemen. Hello, we thank all the speakers for the interesting and uh, relevant uh, presentation. We can clearly see that uh, recently hybrid cyber threats uh, are becoming more relevant and more and more countries are facing them. But uh, uh, most of them have not yet found effective ways to, to fight such threats. And uh, it should be mentioned that the Australian Lithuanian Cyber Research Network has already started its activities. Uh, some research outputs have been presented in several conferences, uh, including in, uh, international ones. Uh, publications are being prepared for highly ranked uh, scientific journals. Uh, uh, meanwhile, the idea of Australian Lithuanian Hybrid set Threat Center is to emphasize and highlight, uh, as already been mentioned, one of the activities of this network, hybrid cyber threats and related research. Uh, therefore, within the network of this Australian Lithuanian hybrid threats center, the research will be carried out specifically as far as it's concerned with hybrid threats, hybrid cyber threats, their manifestation and, and means of combating this type of, of of threats and one of the ideas uh, uh, from colleague Petkavichus, it was mentioned that we know Russia, but do we know China? Maybe we also will concentrate on China activity uh, as regards hybrid cyber threats. Uh, and uh, therefore we invite uh, researchers, scientists, public and private organizations, associations to join these activities together and to start implement certain ideas regarding hybrid uh, cyber threats. Uh, the relevance of this uh, field uh, is increasing. And if we take Lithuania as a country based on the reports of National Lithuania National Cyber Security Center in recent years, and as well as based on the reports of uh, Lithuanian State Security Department, uh, the number of cyber enable uh, information operations against Lithuania is increasing and foreign actors uh, employ disinformation and, and cyber manipulations against Lithuania and its allies. 
and such operation aim to weaken transatlantic ties to sow disorder in, in society and undermine public trust in, in state, even in state institutions. And the even latest technologies are used to perform hybrid attacks. Artificial intelligence is also used, for example, for to write uh, some stories or to, to generate uh, convincing pictures of non-existing uh, person's faces. Uh, of course, Lithuania is taking a lot of measures to combat such threats, but, but uh, much measures to be uh, taken in the future. Uh, and in Australia, uh, the, the, the threats are still perceived uh, in, let's say, in isolation and uh, this classification of hybrid cyber threats are related and related research is just beginning. And uh, in addition, uh, as mentioned, the hybrid threats are also appearing in other countries and this manifestation will continue to increase in our opinion and the forms of, of such threats will uh, become more diverse. Uh, therefore, it can be said that uh, research requires uh, the use of uh, requ the research requires the use of specialists uh, from various fields of science. Even uh, such research must be multidisciplinary. Only then we can achieve some uh, results. Uh, and and I also want to remind that uh, the website of Australian Lithuanian cyber research network is uh, open and active and the address is alcrn.com uh, and the network's LinkedIn profile is also active. You can register to this profile. Uh, in these resources you, you, you will find uh, all the contacts you, you can use to contact us for, for the future activity. Uh, and maybe my colleagues uh, would like to add something at the end of our event. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you together, guys. And as a, as a professor Darius mentioned, it's a multidisciplinary object and, and we should not forget about the important thing as the legal regulation because we're faced with the new relationships, legal relationships, and we don't even have legal definition for 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 some of the activities of the of the hybrid threats. So it's very important to identify them correctly, to use the same language, to use the same definition, even if we're using the English language as the primary. But even the content of the definition and understanding of the same things on different countries, on our and on yours, and that Europe different countries are different. So. It's very important to try to unify it, to try identify and immediately unify and, and then to help to react. And don't forget about, about the law because the law is always without the, the reacting is just declaration. We need to, to, to create maybe some new new definitions and new regulations for it. And yeah, that's, that's how our future works, I think. So we'll have a lot of to do in the future. So let's let's make it. OK, and uh, just to uh, uh, thank you, uh, Marius, uh, just to also say that, uh, you know, I, I think in terms of what uh, today's event sort of highlighted is the importance of partnership, you know, is to deal with these challenges. You know, countries can't do them, uh, do it by themselves. They have to work uh, together. And, you know, what we have uh, with the network is and the centre is an example of, of Lithuania and Australia, you know, different parts of the world working together to deal with common issues and uh, and threats and new issues, uh, you know, which for us relates to uh, hybrid threats, but also then, as uh, Darius mentioned, the impact of new technologies and how those new technologies will generate new threats. And within Australia and Lithuania, you know, our governments and societies, you know, have to be prepared to deal with those uh, new threats. And over to you, Larky. Thank you. Excellent. F thank you all. Um, well, well, that draws us to a conclusion for well, this evening's event or this morning's event, depending where you're viewing. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we wish you a safe and relaxing time over the holiday season. And we look forward to updating you about our, our initiative further into 2023. So thank you very much all and good evening. Thank you everybody.